In this video, I'd like to talk about the relationship between exponential functions and logarithmic functions. And the general idea is that they are inverse functions of each other. So let me quickly write that down, that these are inverse functions. And remember that inverse functions essentially reverse each other. So if we had some function where the input or the domain had values of, let's say, 2 and 4, and the output to this function would be, let's say, values of 5 and 10, then the function takes the input and tells you the output. So it maps this input of 2 to an output of 5, and likewise, it maps the input of 4 to an output of 10. Now, the inverse function does the opposite of this. It reverses that order. So our inverse, which we write as f of minus 1 here, this is not to the minus 1 power. This is just the notation for inverse functions. That would take our output and tell us what the original input was from our function. So the inverse function, or the inverse mapping, goes in the reverse direction. So we can say that the inverse of 5 is equal to 2. And formally speaking, inverse functions, if we want a better definition, tell us that f of a, when we put a into our function, that specific value, it would, let's say, give us a value of b. The inverse to this, if we plug b into our function, it will give us an output of a. So inverse functions reverse each other. And exponential and logarithmic functions are inverse functions of each other. So let's look at a specific example before we jump into any of these problems here, just so that we can understand the relationship a little bit better. Let's say we have the exponential function y equals 10 to the x, and we want to find its inverse. So the first step when you're finding an inverse, so let's say we are going to invert this, we want to switch the x and y values. And by switching them, we can find that inverse function. They switch because we're essentially reversing the function process. And if you want, you can call this f of x. And so we're finding f inverse of x. And so to switch them, we get x equals 10 to the y. And our next step to find that inverse function, we need to solve for y. So to do that, since y is in the exponent, we can rewrite this as a logarithm. So remember that when you're rewriting a logarithm, so we'll have log with a base, the base of the logarithm is always the base of your exponential expression. So this will be a log base 10, which is the common log. And so eventually we don't even have to write the base 10 since if you see log, it's just assumed that the base is 10. And the logarithm is always equal to the exponent. Logarithms are exponents. And so process of elimination, the x would go on the inside of our logarithm. Or you could remember that the input of the logarithm is always what the exponential expression is equal to. So we have this new equation, y equals log base 10 of x, which, like I mentioned, we can really just write as log x, since this is the common log and base 10 is just implied here. Now, since we solve for y after switching x and y, this is now equal to the inverse function. And you can check that this is true, because going by this definition, let's say we plug in the point into our original function of 1. We'll plug in an x value of 1, and that's just 10 to the first, which is 10. And so in our inverse function, when we plug in 10, now we're doing log base 10 of 10. So we ask, what power do we raise 10 to to get 10? And we would raise 10 to the first power to equal 10. So you can see that the definition is satisfied. And just to further understand this, let's look at a picture of this. So let's get out the graphing calculator. And I've already typed in our functions, 10 to the x and log of x. We do have a common log button here. And I've also put in the equation y equals x, because with inverse functions, when we graph them, 
they're always a mirror image about this line y equals x. And you can see that symmetry here. Now notice the red one's kind of cut off. That's just because it does not exist for x values less than zero or equal to zero. But if we were to zoom in here, we would see that this line actually just continues down and hugs this y-axis here. So if you look at these functions from a higher level, sort of a big picture, you can think that exponential functions grow incredibly fast and logarithmic functions, since they're the inverse, they grow incredibly slowly. But this nice symmetry does indicate that they're in fact inverses of each other. So with that in mind, let's start doing some of the example problems. I will clear some space and then we can go through the exercises.